Dear friends, today I am going to discuss how to differentiate between tasks and end of time. Let us assume the situation that one fine day you have operated uh, three cases for cataract surgery, you have done nice facial resection with foldable oil, there is no problem in the surgery, but when you open up the patch in next day for the dressing, you feel devastated by seeing the or even post operative result that the eye is full of coronary edema, there is a fibrin reaction with hypopion. You never expected this kind of result uh, next day in spite of a beautiful surgery. You are in dilemma, what is it? Is it end off or is it task? What should I do now? Should I give intravitreal? And whether to continue the surgery for the next day? So here I am going to tell you the how you can differentiate the task from infectious end of thermitis. So what is task? Task is uh, Sterile post-operative inflammatory reaction caused by non-infectious substance which enters into anterior segment during the surgery and it causes toxic damage to intraocular structures. TAS is very difficult to differentiate it from the infectious endophthalmitis because there will be a severe inflammatory reaction with, uh, with fibrin development with hypopion in both situations as TAS as well as in endophthalmitis. However, there are certain clinical features which can definitely differentiate it uh, from the infectious endothermitis, which are these are called as hallmarks of TAS. Like it, uh, the, the onset is within 12 to 24 hours, limbus to limbus coronary edema, vitreous is relatively clear, and dramatic response to steroid. But none of these signs are specific enough to diagnose TAS or exclude infectious endophthalmitis. The causes of TAS, it is a non-infectious reaction to toxic substance that enter inside the eye. For example, irrigating solution, viscoelastic, intracameral drug like pilocarpine, moxifloxacin, chemical residues. So let us compare each clinical feature of TAS and infectious endophthalmitis in detail. Coming to the onset, TAS usually appear between 12 to 24 hours after the surgery. And acute endophthalmitis usually develop between 4 to 7 days. However, certain fulminant endophthalmitis like, uh, like pseudomonas endophthalmitis or bacillus serous endophthalmitis can develop within uh, 48 hours time, but their presentation usually later as compared to TAS. Comparing to the visual symptoms, in TAS there will be a blurring of vision or mild to moderate visual loss. However, in acute endothermitis, visual loss can be performed. In TAS, there will not be any pain or there will be just mild to moderate type of pain. However, in endothermitis, there will be a severe pain and pain can be present in 75% of endothermitis cases. Symptoms like headache, increasing redness, discharge, photophobia are more in endophthalmitis and they usually absent in TAS. Upper lid edema is usually present in acute endophthalmitis cases and lid edema in TAS is usually uncommon. Signs like conjunctival congestion and chemosis are usually more often in endophthalmitis cases and in TAS these signs are minimal. Now coming to the corneal edema. Corneal edema in TAS is variable and widespread and it is the hallmark of the TAS. There will be a diffuse total corneal edema from limbus to limbus. Corneal edema in endophthalmitis will be localized and more patchy. The pupil in TAS will be dilated, irregular and it will, it is fixed, it will not react to light because of sphincter damage and the pupil in endophthalmitis may be meiotic, may be variable. AC reaction, there will be mild to severe reaction with cells, flare and hypopion, fibrin formation over the iris and over the anterior surface of the iron. In TAS, exudate usually white. In acute endothermitis, there will be marked inflammatory response in the AC with hypopion and exudate usually yellowish. Intraocular pressure in TAS usually on higher side, sometimes it can go as high as up to 40 to 60 millimeters of mercury. Intraocular pressure in endophthalmitis is usually normal. The fundal glow in TAS will be normal or mildly poor, but fundal glow in endophthalmitis will be poor or upset. In TAS, fibrinoid reaction usually in anterior chamber, there will be no retinal involvement. However, in endophthalmitis, there will be a retinal periphrobitis and mid peripheral retinal hemorrhages in early stages. In TAS, vitreous is usually clear, 
and in end of thermitis there will be a marked inflammation in the vitreous. In B scan, in TAS, vitreous cavity is usually clear, whereas in end of thermitis there will be mild to moderate echoes in the vitreous cavity. Gram stain and culture from the vitreous tab and AC tab will be negative in TAS cases, however, they usually come positive in acute end of thermitis. So there will be a dramatic response to steroid in TAS cases, however, in end of thermitis, there will be a temporary suppression of inflammation because of visual outcome usually better in cases of TAS as compared to acute end of thermitis. There will be a dramatic response to steroid in TAS cases. You have to give a topical steroids, systemic steroids and also you can give IV steroids like dexamethasone or hydrocortisone at least for 5 days. These are the photographs of resolution of TAS following cataract surgery. So dear friend, how to prevent TAS? Never use chemical sterilization for your ophthalmic instruments. Avoid detergent and enzymatic powder to clean ophthalmic cannulated instruments. After the surgery, clean all your instrument thoroughly make them dry. If you are using ultrasonic cleaner to clean your instrument, then change your bath solution every time. Minimize intracameral drugs like moxifloxacin, pilocarpine, adenarin, lignocaine, and finally use good quality of irrigating solutions, viscoelastic materials, and oils. Thank you for listening.